So today's subject um, is to live in an RV or to take advantage of something called rent control. Now, where I live, um, I'm actually in, so those of you that may know, I'm in the Portland area, but I'm actually over the border in Washington is where I actually live. So where I live in Washington state is actually just a suburb of the Portland, Oregon metro. But the reason I mention that is because uh, I live in Washington, so what I'm about to talk about really doesn't apply to me. But Oregon just recently, in the last few weeks here, last couple weeks, uh, passed a rent control measure uh, in the legislature, the Oregon legislature, to, to try to address the ever burgeoning cost of rent for people and how it's affecting people's livelihoods and their ability to just survive. And uh, it's not it's not a real common thing, uh, not a real common measure that gets applied, but there are some very notable places around the U.S. that have implemented rent control. Uh, the one that always pops in my head when I hear rent control is New York City. And um, so now they've done it in Oregon. And so I'm just curious what you guys think about that. I mean, I, I can already imagine what some of the feedback would be, which is it usually falls down the lines of those that believe in the free market of capitalism, uh, and then those that fall down on the other side, which is that we have to protect some of those that are less fortunate, and we have to protect those that are, those that are not as economically well off as others in society. And, uh, you know, I'm of the belief that that gap is continuing to widen between uh, more and more people that fall into the have-not category and uh, less and less of those that control more and more of the wealth. So, not that I'm trying to start a controversy or, or uh, get people riled up here, but I think the topic of rent control definitely falls into that category that defines people as being either free market, completely free market thinkers, free market capitalism versus those that say, and this is where I fall, again, not to get people worked up here, but where I fall is that I believe that, I do believe in capitalism, but I think capitalism has to have some breaks, it has to have some checks, there has to be some oversight, you can't have unfettered, in my opinion, you cannot have unfettered free market capitalism because uh, just like absolute power does, free market capitalism with no breaks, no restraints, no oversight, no checks, ends up corrupting absolutely, just like absolute power does. Uh, and then what happens is that the, the majority of the money is concentrated in a very small number of hands, which we are seeing in this country, as we've been seeing in this country, as it continues to happen to a greater and greater degree year by year. Um, so, you know, oh hell with it, I mean, I'm already, I'm already broaching topics to get people worked up, so what, whatever, I'll just dive into it. So, when people want to say we're a democracy, well, first of all, they need to go back and, and understand what that means. We're not really a democracy, we're a republic, we're a, a, a representative democracy, we're a representative democracy, I guess you could say. But in reality, you know, the way things continue to go and the way that uh, the wealth continues to be shifted to a smaller and smaller pool of people, this is really a plutocracy. It's a plutocracy, meaning that the very few, the very ultra-wealthy really do influence and make most of the decisions in this country. They buy the lobbyists, they control the legislators, they, uh, at least to a great degree, they do. Now, I don't like that, and I'm not trying to be defeatist, I'm not trying to be uh, a pessimist, uh, I'm just, I'm a realist, I'm just a realist, and so I'm calling it like I see it, that more and more things in this country are really just decided by the ultra-wealthy and the strings that they pull at the levels of power in the federal government and in state government. And um, so I think people like to believe that we have a lot of choices and they like to believe that we're a democracy and 
Uh, certainly our system is better than most. It's better than a lot of places in the world, absolutely. But it doesn't mean that our system of government uh, and our system of politics and system of uh, speech, it doesn't mean that we don't have problems in this country that I think we tend to want to ignore, well, at least a lot of people want to tend to ignore or gloss over or minimize their effect, their impact on how it touches individual individual people's lives. All that is to say that the topic of rent control kind of touches on that, which is that unfettered free market capitalism, uh, <laughs> rent prices can kind of run away. And, and uh, you know, I know a lot of people, I'm going to switch sides here. I know a lot of people, I can already imagine it, excuse me, may not be that sympathetic to this issue, or they may say, well, you know, you should just buy then. You should just buy real estate, and then, you know, you don't have to worry about that. Well, that's not true. I have owned real estate before. I owned a home with a previous partner, and it has its, it has its challenges too. It's like, you're not, you're not... You're not getting some kind of super pass just because you own something. And in reality, until you make all your payments, you don't own it anyway. You're just renting it from the bank. So you, if you run out and get a 30-year mortgage and go, okay, well, boy, I'm just going to step on all kinds of toes today. Pause for a moment. I can tell <laughs> with where my mind is going, I'm going to step on all kinds of toes today. But I, it just has to be said. I, I, this is how I feel about it. So just because someone runs out and gets a 30-year mortgage on a place doesn't mean that somehow they're they have a super pass and they've moved ahead in this game they haven't because things can still go wrong and they did when i owned a place with my uh, previous partner it's like things still go wrong uh you know your water heater breaks your roof needs replacing you get a water line break that you have to repair um i mean goodness appliances fail there may be some kind of um, structural damage that gets discovered at some point due to something you know that, that happens, a uh, natural occurring event or something. There's all kinds of things that can go wrong. And so when you own, and I'm using that term loosely, own, because until you make all your payments, you're just renting that place from the bank. But all right, well, for the sake of this conversation, we'll say own. So when you own, you still have all these expenses that can pop up and catch you by surprise and, and soak savings out of you or soak money that you've been setting aside for other things. Um, and my, all I'm trying to say, I'm not knocking home ownership. What I'm trying to say is that since I've been on both sides of the aisle with home ownership and with renting, I know that there's no panacea to this. There is no panacea to this discussion. There really isn't. And so, for many, many people, uh, renting is a reality. I'm currently renting right now. But for many people, renting is a reality. And for many people, it's, it's the reality that they will do the rest of their life. And so, you can't just dismiss it. You can't just be callous about it. You can't just be uncaring about the situation. Because, like so many things in our lives, you know, we can say, Oh, well, that doesn't apply to me, you know. That crime in the inner city doesn't apply to me. Or, oh, those crumbling schools don't apply to me. Or, oh, those people in rentals that can't afford them and they're getting evicted or they're having to resort to other means of finding a roof over their head, like maybe living in an RV. That doesn't affect me. And there is a lot of that, especially with people that think, tend to think more like free market capitalism. They tend to want to act like those problems don't affect me. Those problems have nothing to do with me. Well, you know what? They do. Because then those problems, when we ignore them as a society, those problems come home to roost for everybody. And so if you ignore these issues, they do become a problem. Like, you ignore crime in the inner city and act like it's not your problem, well, guess what? It's going to sneak up and it's going to affect you too at some point. It's going to creep into the suburbs. It's going to creep into areas that you thought weren't going to be affected by it. And it's the same with... Uh, rental prices continuing to escalate in 
And uh, hold on, I'll, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm picking back up where we left off. The, I stopped the camera about an hour ago, so I think I remember about where I was at in this uh, discussion. Because uh, Curtis called and I had to answer that, and then I had a delivery I was going to. And uh, now I'm back on the road, so now's a good time to reconvene where we were at. Uh, I think where I left off was discussing that when society thinks that the problems of the less fortunate are not their own problems and it doesn't affect them and has no bearing on their lives, uh, it absolutely does. In fact, it ends up coming back and bearing a greater cost later on down the road. So those inner city crimes that get ignored because it's not about us and it doesn't affect us and we're in the suburbs where it's safe and all that. Well, guess what? That stuff does eventually spill out into the suburbs. Uh, not caring about those schools that other people's kids go to because you don't have kids or because, well, your kids are in a good school so we don't care about those other people's kids. Well, guess what? If, uh, if some kids are, are afforded a, a less good education, then it's going to limit potentially some of the choices that they make or maybe lead them down some other paths of other choices that, that they might make. And that could turn into someone who, you know, is making choices that affect your livelihood, affect your personal safety, affect your property. Um, I mean, there's all kinds of ramifications that when we don't think in terms of the society and everyone in it, and what will benefit other people that may be less fortunate, well then it can end up coming back and biting us in the ass. And so it works that way with all these different various topics. Um, you know, people complaining about people complaining about the homeless and the trash they leave and the mess and, and uh, just all the various things that come with people being homeless. And I'm not saying that this is a direct correlation, but there are a lot of people that do get forced into homelessness because they cannot afford rental or they get evicted for whatever reason. So uh, these these questions about rent control and about no cause evictions and things like that, well then it then can correlate to these situations where people may be forced into being homeless or living in an RV and then guess what? Now they're parked outside of your house, they're parked outside of your business, they're in your neighborhood potentially, I'm just saying potentially. And so that's how these things, when we ignore them as a society, they end up affecting all of us down the road. So just because it's not your problem today, does not mean it's not gonna be your problem tomorrow. So it's important that we should think about those bigger problems and we should think about how the people that are less fortunate than ourselves, how they're faring in our economy and our society, etc. So it, it just came to mind because there's been a lot of news about the rent control measure that was passed or a law that was passed in Oregon and it also addressed no cause evictions and things like that. And so it just brought it to mind. So it was just what was on my mind today. And so since I'm in the car and I got time to spare, I figured I'd talk about it. So let me know your thoughts. I'm Hush, Janessa. Um, anyway, um, what was I going to say? So anyway, I probably have already like offended some people and touched on some sensitive issues earlier in the video expressing my opinion on these matters. But it is my opinion. You don't have to agree with it. That's fine. It's just my opinion. So let me know what you think. Uh, I will include some footage of Curtis and Magnum and Stanley when I get back home, which is uh, in a little bit here. So that'll be on the end of this video. And until the next one, until the next video, see ya. Bye.